good afternoon. So we have a big lesson that we learned. I don't know if you guys remember this little thing. I planted these a week ago. No, it's two weeks now. So it's been two weeks and Nothing. Look, I'll show you. Nothing came up. Nothing at all. And seeds usually take at most a week to start producing. Or not producing, I'm sorry. It takes at least a week for them to really start growing. But we got nothing. So we did our research and found out that our seeds went bad. We thought, I mean, first time planting was three or four years ago now. We thought that seeds they just lasted. You didn't have to worry about it as long as you kept them in cool temperatures, which I know I left the book outside um, for a few weeks during the summer, a few summers ago. Seeds go bad because we spent a lot of money. We went online and we just ordered a bunch of seeds because we were like, yeah, we'll keep these for the next few years. We'll use them and produce and grow our veggies and our herbs until we run out of seeds. That's not how it went. Found out. Seeds went bad. So that's a good thing to know. Your seeds do go bad. And online it can list out some seeds last really long, some don't. Like I, I do have some beans and some peas that came up and we're going to actually be transplanting those soon. So those came up and those are I guess actually more hardy. I don't know. They last longer. We went online to Amazon and we got these. So this I think is our herbs. Yeah. So we have all of our herbs. There's 15 herbs in here. And here is our vegetables. And they came pretty fast, especially with all the shortages that we've had going on around the, the uh, US right now. But we're gonna open these. I haven't even opened them yet to look at them. Probably should have, before I told you all about them. So I'm gonna open them. These are vegetables, like I said. We're gonna see how these look. And I'm gonna be doing some more planting so that way we can get things in the ground. I looked it up and we're almost to the end where you can uh, grow seeds indoors. Oh, that's so cool. So here it is, look. <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to do that, but I did. That's this. Let's see. That's kind of cool. Just some facts that you need to know and then ways that you can contact these guys. This actually uses, uh, talks about using plastic wrap on the back of this card, but with these containers that we buy, and we're gonna list everything that we've got in this video right here down below, because we got it all off of Amazon. We actually, these actually come with little plastic lids. The only thing that I do not like about them is they don't really like snap over the edge, so you kind of have to put something on top to where if it gets windy outside, those lids don't blow over, but it keeps the, and locks the moisture in for your plants. So I just set our, because we are growing, we grow these on our front porch underneath the uh, the uh, shade. Because as the sun comes up, it gives it just enough sunlight through the shade and then, or through the little shade cloths on our front porch. Anyways, so that's where we do it out there. So I just put our uh, garden shears on top of that, and then we had a rock that we put on the other one. So yeah, that was super helpful. I forgot to completely tell you guys in the video when I did this. Again, more tips, tricks, and that's really cool. So this, is it for our area? So this is for zone six. We are in zone nine. So if you're in our part of Texas, we're in zone nine. So this will not work for us, but if you're in zone six, you're in luck because it gives you everything. But you can find these online all over the place. Just Google your zone and then planting calendar and it'll show you. But that's really cool to know. Only for zone six, though. So we have some onions, some turnips, radish. Oh, those are cool. Look at squash. Look at those. Squash, bell peppers, lettuce. That's prize head lettuce. And then you got bib lettuce. And then... These are just like old fashioned mustard greens, kind of cool. I think we grew some of these once. I think so, I think it was last season. Oh look, some more beans. 
Paris Island lettuce, Brussels sprouts, which actually I'm going to have to come back and plant some more of these because our ducks or some type of bird in our yard, we're not going to name names and blame anybody that probably didn't do it, but somebody in our farm ate some of our uh, Brussels sprout plants and our broccoli plant plants. Some more peas. Contender beans. You got some dark red beets. Some black beauty zucchini squash. Copenhagen market cabbage. I don't think I've ever heard of that one before. I, I think, I don't think we planted uh, cabbage this year. Spinach, we like spinach. Kale, we have kale and it is still growing out there. That's one thing that they didn't bother. Maybe they don't like it. Swiss chard, we have that growing still. That, that survived, maybe they don't like that either. Oop, I got that wet. Some regular crookneck squash. More beans. Cauliflower, which we, we need to plant some of this as well. I probably should be setting some of this stuff aside. That's okay. Cucumbers. Carrots. We used to have some carrot seeds that we had planted a few years back. We actually used all of them and there were these dragon fruit, dragon something carrots and they were really, really red. It was really pretty. Tasted like normal carrots too. Some broccoli. It's fall, so some pumpkins. I think it's too late to actually plant pumpkins. I need to look into that before I plant those. Corn, because of our garden setup, it's gonna be pretty hard to plant corn, but maybe we can plant some of these and then transplant them to other areas of the yard as long as the chickens and the guineas and the ducks leave it alone. Eggplant. Collards. Okra. Okra and tomatoes. By far a really good dish. I love it. Love it as a side. Fried okra, pickled okra, everything. Mason loves pickled okra. That's one thing that he could snack on all day long. Some tomatoes. Cantaloupe, saving that for next summer for us to plant where the uh, chickens are, where they're fertilizing and getting that ground ready for us, and some celery. So that's all our veggies that we have. Just gonna set them to the side. Like I said, I need to go through and only pull out the ones that are good for zone nine for this time of year, which I've almost memorized that list. I guess once you get going good enough, you remember these things. It's trash. So here's our herbs. So that actually came, I don't know if I told you, it's 32 vegetables, uh, different vegetables for your seeds in that pack. And this one is 15 herbs. It's actually really cool. It tells you on here. I'm really excited. Look, there's lavender in here. I've, I don't think we've ever planted lavender. So let's see. I'm just going to open up and go through it again. I like going through stuff like this because all the seeds look so different and it's so cool to look at them. Of course, these, you can't even see them, but look. Let's see. Growing instructions. So this one actually comes with a book and it tells you. That's really cool. So first one came up, cilantro. We love our cilantro. So your germination days can be 10 to 21 days. So a little bit more than a week. Almost three weeks. So yeah, it goes through all the different ones. Let's see if I can do this backwards. Oh, look, all the different ones and tells you, okay, this is how long it'll take, recommended areas to grow them and your tips. Huh, I, see, look, I never knew that. With cilantro, is sorry, that's the dishwasher. It says, pinch the young plants back about one inch to develop bushier plants. As soon as the main stem starts to develop, flower buds cut off the top part of the stem Watch the plants clo closely in hot weather and they tend to go to seed under these conditions. I never knew that. So a little fun fact for you. I don't know if y'all knew that. Steven actually, the other day he made some noodles and so we put like a whole bunch of herbs and stuff in our noodles when we cook. And whenever he made his noodles, he put coriander seeds in there because Coriander seeds is how you get cilantro. You plant coriander seeds, you grow cilantro. It's kind of cool. I don't know why they didn't just call it cilantro seeds. I don't know. But he took a bite out of one of them and he said they don't taste good whenever you eat just the, the seeds. So that's good to know. This package is the same brand. No, it's not. So this is homegrown. 
homegrown heirloom heirloom seeds and this is cedra so cedra has come with a little bit more they come with little stakes where you can write on right or yeah so they're blank on both sides and you can write and label your garden ten dollars off for your next order and let's see what this is so these actually that I might do a video on this I have not done enough research to be able to educate you guys but there are some packs in here for you to test the pH of your soil and that's actually really important for whenever you are growing a garden making sure that you have the right stuff right amount of nutrients and it's versus hydrogen it's like the power of hydrogen versus the potential of hydrogen I'm not sure I'm gonna research that and I'll have to get back with you guys on this but let's see what does it say to do dip the pH strip into this oh wait there's a whole bunch of instructions but there's a whole bunch of test strips in here so that's good to know let's see you put soil in a small plastic or glass container, add distilled water, stir and shake for a minute, and then you have to let it rest for 30 minutes. Oh, we need, we need to get coffee filters. We're so spoiled with our K-cup uh, coffee dispenser, we don't have coffee filters anymore. So you gotta pour, pour it through a filter and then dip it into your second container. Huh, and then you just compare the strips, yeah. I never even thought about doing this. I've always considered trying to go and get our soil t tested, like taking it somewhere to an ag site. There's actually one near the boys' school through Texas A&M. That's near their school, right? Yeah. But we've never taken the time to do it because we've always been able to produce our plants. And that's something else that I'm really bad at remembering to do is each year you got to do your research to find out, okay, if you plant tomatoes here this year, what can you plant next year because it balances out your different things can produce better so that's something that I need to do better at maybe I'll start with our next garden cilantro tarragon man those are some tiny seeds oregano thyme pretty much all of your herbs can be planted in your fall and winter garden it's I feel like it's actually easier to grow these in your fall and winter garden because you're not dealing with the hot temperatures. The hot temperatures is whenever it really starts to wilt and kill your uh, leafy things. Chives, mountain mint, how in the heck, looks like little bitty bugs, but how in the heck am I supposed to get those seeds and just get two to three for each? Parsley. Fennel. I don't think I've ever had too many dishes that have fennel in it. I don't know. Basil. We've got some dill. Seeds are getting bigger. Savory compact summer? What? I don't even know. What is that? It almost looks like rosemary. It's right there. Yeah, it almost looks like rosemary. Really similar. I'm gonna have to look into that and find out what that is. Might plant some just to try it out. Lemon mint. Ooh, that does sound good. Maybe I should just do a whole thing of these with herbs. Maybe that's what I'll do. Rosemary. Because most of our vegetables we already have planted because we went to the nursery and bought the, the young plants that are already growing. So maybe that's what I'll do. I don't know, but this is a lot. This is overwhelming a little bit. And I just want everything. I want one of everything. <laughs> Sage and lavender. Ooh. Lavender. I wonder if it smells like lavender in here. Love that smell of lavender. Get to the bottom. Probably not going to say that in a minute whenever I need to get them out. Ooh, that smells so good. Y'all want to smell? You can't really. <laughs> Gosh, that smells really good. Okay, so I've confirmed it. I'm gonna do herbs today because I really wanna try that savory. Where's it at? Where'd it go? I don't even know. Gosh, it's so small. Oh, it says it in here. Let's, let's look in our book and see what savory is or says. I don't even know. Lavender, 
Basil. Savory is the last page. Wonder why. They probably put it at the end because nobody really knows what it is, so they just want to throw you a curveball so you can go straight to it. Let's see. It grows upright instead of sprawling for contain. This is actually a really good one for containers. You can grow indoors if you have a window that faces south. Wait, so that's north. So, no, that's north. So one of our living room windows would be closest. Not really. So savory can be used as a replacement for salt or thyme in many recipes. The plants are used medicinally and were considered a love potion in olden times. So uh, maybe I need to make or grow a whole bunch of those and just constantly feed it to Steven so he never stops loving me. <laughs> oh goodness. Yeah, this is actually really cool. Like your dill, it says you should consider growing with garlic, onions, leeks, and soybeans as companion plants. So yeah, this book, really helpful. We're gonna hold on to it. Probably gonna take pictures of it, scan it into our computer. That way it's super easy to find in, because knowing me, I'm gonna spill water on this eventually or ruin it. But yeah, that's really cool. So, because of that, we're gonna start with savory first. And I'm gonna do something different. So last time I was using my finger, but this time I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna poke a hole with this flathead. Some people use pencils, some people use the end of a screwdriver, whatever it is. I'm just going to use this and go through and make holes in our soil in these little pods that I have and then we can cover them up. Make it easy. These are actually a little dry. They're still pretty wet on the inside. And I meant to tell you, so when I did this first video, you'll have to go back and watch it. I'll try to put the link up above for you to click on if you're curious on how I set this up. But it said that these could go a whole week at a time before you have to water them and it's true you could almost get away with about a week and a half without watering these guys so i don't know if you've noticed you see how this one's like really really dark and then this one's getting lighter whenever it gets to this lighter color that's when you need to water if it's this color you're good so it's actually really helpful to know when you need to water and helps you to not overwater your garden you guys, this really is probably not really a love potion. Don't don't take me serious. But I'll I'll keep you updated. I'll, I'll give you an update in a few weeks when we start getting and producing this. When I start sneaking it into Steven's uh, food. I'm going to do the ones that we're going to for sure eat. That savory just caught my mind. I don't know why I'm talking so much about it. Maybe you guys can count how much how many times I've said savory in this video. Let me know in the comments. I don't know. I'm just gonna do the ones that we're for sure gonna use. And then some of these I just wanna do to try, like this lemon mint, never even heard of a lemon mint. I like lemon flavored things for sure. And I don't even know what we'd use it in. So maybe I can find a, a good recipe to use it in. Lavender. I don't, I know lavender is one of them, but also basil. So if you ever deal with aphids, that's, way too many if you ever deal with aphids on your lettuce there are some organic recipes out there that you can use with like apple cider vinegar and dish soap to uh kill those off but another trick is those did not come off my finger another trick that you can use is plant basil and like really good aromatic stuff around your garden and in between those plants that are really attract, like that really attract the aphids, and that is supposed to help with that issue. Which the first year that we planted a garden, you know, the first year, yeah, yeah, the first year we planted, we had a big problem with aphids. But we did the apple cider vinegar and dish dish soap. I want to say I can't remember 100% off the top of my head, but I'll find that recipe and I'll try to put it below if you're looking for it. But we ended up planting some basil and 
in between those plants it it helped for sure mountain mint for sure parsley chives thyme wait how many spots do i have left one two three four so four Ooh. let's figure it out basil for sure oregano yes so that's two i want to try that mountain mint that's three i need one more I, I, i'm just gonna do something because we like all of these so i'm just gonna mix them all up and choose one random one because i don't know i plan to plant more so chives is the winner i'm gonna plant more seeds i just have to uh, prepare another container which i'll do that in another video so for now i'm just gonna do the ones to get something going and I also need to evaluate how many squares we have left that we can use because I do want to plant some vegetables that we don't have. I know there was a couple in here that we don't have. Oregano, my laundry's done. If y'all want to do that for me, that'd be fantastic. Like, oh, oregano. I'm just gonna try my best. If I get more than one, then we'll choose the one that's the strongest plant and transplant that one. Now it's time to cover these things up with their soil. All plant, or all seeds are planted. That went a lot smoother than I thought. So what I'm actually gonna do is I have a little handheld water outside that I'm going to water these guys. I'm going to put the lid on there and we're just going to wait and see how it goes. I'm going to keep a close eye on them and hopefully these guys will actually produce and we won't be just looking at blank seed, seed pods. So these little, uh, these are, uh, oh, what are they called? I'm having a total So these little discs, I can't think of what they're called right now, and I apologize for that. These discs are going to be uh, listed down below. The trays, that these black trays, are listed down below, as well as these two seed packs. So this one had a lot more in it, and they were more organized with their pretty pictures and things like that. But I definitely liked this brand because of all the helpful information that came with it. And we can test our soil now. So I'm going to look into that and see what needs to be done and how our soil is looking because I'm kind of curious. We've never had it tested. I don't, you probably don't really have to as long as you just make sure you take care of it, which we, I mean, we do take care of our soil. Definitely adding comp compost and stuff like that helps because we use the cotton burr compost. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, just drop them down below. We'll be happy to help you guys. And like I said, we'll see how this little love potion plant goes and I'm super excited for the mints. I love minty things. I love lemons and I think that's everything. Let us know if there's any unique plants that we should try. Remember we are in zone 9 so if you're not in zone 9 don't pay close attention to what we planted because your planting guide may be different. Maybe you have freezing temperatures and some of these plants can't last in uh, freezing temperatures which we don't really have that problem except for the beginning of this year when we had the big freeze but just make sure you pay attention to that it's really helpful information it's all online uh, we'll try to list the website where we found our planting guide hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one